because these technologies are so godlike, and I, I use that term very precisely, because if you understand how the fundamental structure of the universe really works, and you then construct technologies that allow you to manipulate those forces directly, you have the command and control of not only energy and unlimited resources, but you also probably have, uh, have technologies that can interfere with the so-called natural biological life cycles of human beings or other living creatures on Earth. And, and lifespans can be extended probably thousands or even maybe tens of thousands of years because of the ability to repair entropic breakdown of DNA and, and you know, uh, the, the ends of DNA, those I've got telomeres is what they're called, which seem to, to control our aging, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this breakaway civilization, if Dolan <clears throat> and I and Joseph and Lavenda and Timothy and others are, are correct, there is almost no way to realistically calibrate how far ahead of us they are. I would say, using our crude historical rule of thumb, they could be a thousand years ahead of us by now, mm -hmm. even though it's only 50 years. Now, think about that. I mean, just think about that. If you have a group of fanatic, dedicated Nazis with their perspective on the rest of human beings, humanity on Earth, where they consider most of humanity, which is not white and, and blonde-haired, to be basically a primitive inferior species, how would a civilization imbued with technological capabilities that allow them to, at some level, even move planets, let me repeat that, mm -hmm. to actually move celestial objects? Because remember, this allows you to negate inertia and gravity and control the forces of gravity so you could set up your own orbits, et cetera, et cetera. If those types of capabilities are in the hands of Nazis, like we've seen in all those movies, I mean, we are in deep, deep trouble. And that is the focus of this conference, to explore the scientific evidence that, in fact, that has, in, in fact, occurred. I mean, Pharrell uh, talked about even the bailout money being tied into this. Uh, basically, <clears throat> obviously, the, there must be a question here of how this thing is, is or was then at least funded. I mean, if they're so advanced at this point, they could probably go out there get whatever resource they would want, gold, diamonds, oil, what have you, uh, things we don't even might know about at this point. But uh, how do you think that well, this thing me, was let started? Well, let me there, because yeah. I think you raised a really important point. Um, I, 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 I presume you have watched Star Trek, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Gene Roddenberry, my dear departed friend, created this amazing vision of a human race living and working together and encountering alien species and living and working together with them in the so-called Federation of Planets, right? And from time to time, they will have scripts or story arcs where uh, people who are still primitive like us, meaning that they are dealing with limited resources, limited energy, limited environment, living space, etc., encounter representatives of the Federation, and it was Gene's great pride to talk about how at that point in time we will have bypassed the concept of money, of possession, of big stuff. Not, not personal stuff, but big stuff. And the reason is just what you said. If you can tap the real forces of the universe, if you can uh, provide access through some technological means to unlimited pollutionless energy in whatever form you desire, be it coherent, like electricity, radio technology, radio waves, lasers, whatever, or incoherent, like heat, just to keep yourself warm, and that allows you then to manipulate the resources of an entire solar system, or, and this is probably going to raise some eyebrows, to create matter out of nothing, out of empty space itself, out of the ether, which I have seen experiments that demonstrate that that's possible with this physics, then you don't need money. 
You don't need the kind of primitive economy that we are dealing with. But reversing your question, who in that larger picture would still need money, and a lot of it, if they in fact are looking forward to some um, cataclysmic, shall we say, change in the planet here itself mm -hmm. in the foreseeable future, obviously the terrestrial representatives of this breakaway civilization here on Earth, still kept, still trapped, still here with within our civilization and amongst us. And if you wanted to identify a class of people that that would describe, I think I'm describing the banksters. Mm -hmm. I think describing the people who run the world because they do control the money of our primitive economy and society. And so all these trillions of dollars that are going into some black hole because it's certainly not going into what it's being purported that they were being uh, you know, taken from taxpayers to be used for. I think that is a, um, a, a stash or a secret fund or a, a, a basically pirate treasure that these ripoff artists are, are taking from the rest of us so they can somehow carve out their own separate civilization when push comes to shove and these other guys decide that they no longer need six billion of us on planet earth and that time appears to be approaching from the circumstantial evidence we're seeing given the rate at which things are accelerating in the financial markets in terms of global geology in terms of very bizarre anomalies taking place around the earth so I think not only are we looking at a secret space program, but we're probably looking now at a secret space war being fought between those on Earth who are trying to maintain their position and those out there who have finally decided that if, 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 if we continue along our present track, we will become a competition for them and they cannot uh, allow that, they cannot you know, afford to have that happen, and so they are taking steps to basically quarantine us here on Earth, and I believe that the evidence will support that they are using this extraordinary technology for some demonstrations of the awful power they possess in terms of blackmailing mm -hmm. governments on this planet to do their bidding to stay home and not become competitors. See, this is a very interesting point. I, I want to, uh, you know, ask you about the representatives here as well. I mean, the, the, the Nazis always comes up as as the arch villain. It seems like, and I don't think a lot of people would agree that many of the banksters that you mentioned are kind of Aryan Germans at this point. If the if oh, this, hang, hang on, yeah, we we, we know from uh, Lavenda's work. We know from Dolan. We know from Joseph Farrell. But in fact, the banksters bankroll the Nazis. They created the Nazis. They, 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 you know, during the 20s and 30s and, and 40s, they were the ones who were totally behind them. What I think we might be seeing is an expression from an old movie now, when thieves fall out. Because what they, I, I, I believe what they did not understand is that they were pawns too. They yes. thought they were the masters of the universe. And they've now found out to their extraordinary shock and surprise that there is much victims and in prison here. I mean, we, we have a, an American author, I don't know whether you ever had him on your show. His name is Alex Jones, and he runs a website called prisonplanet.com. Sure. I think Alex Jones has absolutely got it correct. We are on, if this model is accurate, a prison planet, and someone now is trying to keep us from breaking out. Uh, but who, again, if we go back to this idea, and this is the difficult part here, who is the elite and also what the, is the ideology behind them? Because I believe, uh, just as you said, I think that the, the Nazis were set up in order to fulfill the the uh, the agenda of somebody much higher if you will upon this uh, hierarchy on this ladder of of, uh, of things 
So what if we go into this aspect of talking about some of the motives here, uh, and, and the philosophy that is that is driving this? I mean, if it was, if it's only and solely was a, was a Nazi agenda, um, then at this point, if the if the point here was to eradicate as many people as possible, uh, why wouldn't have they have done so already? Uh, if we look at it from that point of view. Uh, and, and if it's not Nazis at the ultimate, uh, you know, t tip of this pyramid, uh, who, who is doing this, uh, Richard? Who's behind it? Well, you have to, again, back off and look at this from, from a big perspective. Again, in the timeline that Farrell and Lavenda and Dolan and I are looking at, we're looking at the events from World War II leading to a breakaway group of Nazis with this control of technology and physics able to live anywhere they want to but it's a relatively tiny group of people to start with mm. oh. you can live anywhere you want to but is anywhere you want to as nice as earth remember in the entire solar system the only planet where you can walk on beaches and look at sunsets and admire aurora and basically live as you know, we have been living for thousands of years without technology, is here. So even if you command these extraordinary forces, you cannot remake entire planets within, let's say, 60 years. So Earth is still the place that you probably want to, if not live, at least vacation. And to do that, you need the accommodation of various governments so that you have some kind of modus vivendi where you leave them alone and they leave you alone. I mean, six billion people working day and night produce a lot of stuff that whoever is running the show, even from off planet, could probably benefit from. It's not so much that the Nazis were out to exterminate everybody. They were out to exterminate certain competing groups, remember, like the Masons, who right. had the same occult ideas that the uh, the Nazis did, and then of course they were competitors, so they had to be eliminated. Uh, the same way with the uh, Jews. They were another group of competing peoples, because if you look back in, in Jewish tradition, particularly the work of uh, Stan Tennant at the Meru Foundation, you'll find the roots of this physics in uh, Hebrew uh, documentation extending back all the way through the Torah. The keys to this physics are in some of the most ancient, sacred documents on planet Earth. Hmm. And it turns out that those are the peoples that the Nazis targeted for extinction, for extermination. Because if you eliminate the people in terms of, let's say, uh, the uh, Jewish faith, you eliminate the carrier wave of the very physics that allows you to control them. So again, it was about eliminating competition. Um, ultimately, I don't believe that, that this group is out to destroy six billion people on the Earth. I think you're going to let nature try to do that because the physics of the planet itself is changing in a cyclic pattern. And we can see that in various records, like from the U.S. Geological Survey, which shows us that earthquakes and volcanoes and major geological disturbances have been on a monotonic increase for the last several decades. Well, our physics model predicts, in fact, when you look at the solar system, when you look at NASA data, you see planetary changes all over the solar system, which I think are part of a huge natural cycle of this physics, which has to do with alignment, where planets are relative to the center of the galaxy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're looking at very long time cycles.